Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhvedov. A long time ago, I've shown how to take a React application and then access the internal state of application by exposing it on a window object. And I've written why this is useful in this blog post from 2019. Split a very long Cypress test into shorter ones using app actions. Here's the test that I used for this particular blog post. In my application, I'm exposing the app instance if I'm running inside a Cypress browser. Now, here's my single test. It goes through every page of the form, filling it up, clicking to go to the next page, and then ending up submitting the form. Now, let's run this test just to see why this is less than optimal. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited, that's why I moved my avatar into the middle. Here's our single test, filling up the first page of the form all the way through, clicking the next button. It ends up to, on the second form page, fills it up, clicks the next button, fills the last page, and then clicks the sign up button right here. So the whole test takes 19 seconds, which, you know, yes, it's not too long, but a real world test that goes through steps of a page would maybe take a minute, two minutes, three minutes. Imagine I only want to concentrate on this last part, testing the submission. Well, I always have to wait for all the pages to be filled all the way up to the first page, and then sign up is the operation I'm actually interested in. So because we expose the state of application, we can access it from our tests. So the alternative spec has three tests. And let me show it right here. Each test is independent. I can work on the first or second or third uh, test that actually exercises the sign up. But in order for me to, for example, run the third test, well, it needs to fill the first and second pages, right? Almost. So let's look at the first test. It visits the page, it fills everything, right, like the test, but when it goes to the very, very end, it gets the window object and then checks its app, which is the component we exposed right here in our code. Because it's a React component, it has a state object. In the state, you know, we can expect certain field set by filling the form, right? So we check if that state is what we expect it to be, which is just an object in our spec file. So this is what it does. Fills the page, checks the application state at the end. Now let's look at the start of the second, right? Well, somehow it has to start on the second page, and here's how it does it. We get the window, we get its app, which is React component, and then instead of just checking the state property, we invoke the set state react method. That's common to every uh, subclass of react component. And we set the same state object that we checked the first st test ends with, right? To the application, setting the state is exactly the same um, as going through the page and filling all the fields on the first page and clicking the next button. So this test suddenly starts on the second page of a form, immediately. It doesn't go through the first page. We still test the first page in the first test, but we don't have to retest it again and again. At the end of the second page test, we validate that the React application it has a state as described. And then we start the first, third test, sorry. And then we start the third test at that state again and then we finish it. So every test, it's almost like a checkpoint at the end, validates the state of a React application, and then the next state will start from the checkpoint. So we don't have to wait by going through a page again and again and again doing the same thing, but we'll already test it. So this is an example of app actions. From the end-to-end -end test, reaching inside the application logic and state, and then validating the state or setting it up from the end-to-end -end test so that we can continue interacting with the page, but from that checkpoint.